Okay, here I am out in my garage workshop, and what I've got here is an x-ray tube, and right here is the collimator box that I took off of it just a matter of moments ago. As you can see, it's got three different, one, two, three, set screws. Those are um, basically like hex nuts, and what you have to do is unscrew all three of them, and those things secure to this brass ring right here. That brass ring is what holds the, allows the collimator to hold on to the tube itself. Um, this is a Siemens tube. I don't know if you can see that or not. Siemens. Right there is the window. That's the window of the tube. And you'll notice that this window happens to be made of metal. Hang on. You can hear that? I don't want to tap it too hard because It'd be bad if my finger just went right through it. Beryllium is a very soft metal. Also kind of expensive, but it makes really good windows for an x-ray tube. So here we go. And see, um, this is basically a piece of quarter inch plate steel, and that's what helps the, or that's what allows the tube to mount to the overhead crane. But, you know, of course we don't have that here with us right this minute. Okay, now then, what I'm gonna do is, and hopefully they're not gonna be too difficult to move, um, but I've got some more hex nuts here, and once I've got those off, then we'll be back in just a matter of moments, and I'll show you some more stuff. Okay, y'all, we're back. Um, I wanted you to see this. Okay, this is inside. Now I've taken off this ring, and I've also taken off this protective cap. Now, what I've got here, it looks like they've put a half a millimeter of aluminum in here, um, some added filtration. And all this is, see here, it's just a little half millimeter aluminum disc. And you can just take it right out. So, you know, you, you may or may not use this thing. Okay. I wish I had three hands, but I don't. All right, now then, this is kind of an interesting thing. Here's the window. This is the inner window. And this little orange piece should just lift right out. There it goes. This would be a lot easier with an extra person to help me. All right, now then, here goes the window. This is the real window of the tube. Okay, this one just happens to be made out of glass. I'm sorry, not the window of the tube, the window of the tube housing. Um, and I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but actually now we're looking right at the inside of the x-ray tube. I don't know if I'm going to be able to extract it or not, but I'm going to give it a whirl. Okay, uh, a few more hex bolts to take off, and then we'll be back in a matter of moments. Okay, here we are again. Now then, what I've got going on here, I've taken the hex bolts out. Those turned out to be metric, by the way, so I had to go get a different wrench set. Okay, now, here goes this metal ring. That thing is very heavy. I'm not sure if it's, it may be made out of lead, or it could just be steel. Anyway. All right, now then we're kinda in dangerous territory because I've taken off the um, I've taken off the retaining ring basically so now what I've got see that rubber o-ring there as soon as I break that seal um, this tube is full of oil and it's gonna be a big huge mess so what I'm gonna have to do is go get some kind of a catch basin before I do that because I don't want this oil all over my garage floor that would be a huge mess alright I'll be back in just a moment all right, here we are once again, and now I've got my lab assistant, William, with me, and he's going to be helping me here. He's going to hold on to this catch basin. William, get right there just a minute. Here, you hold on to this basin. What I'm going to be doing... Uh-oh. Okay. What I'm going to be doing is taking the seal off very carefully. Plastic. No, what's okay. that? There's the. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do it again. Okay, this thing here is just made out of plastic. Right. Okay. Dad, what's that? That is the messy oil that we want to avoid getting on ourselves at all costs. So, here we go. Gonna dump it in here. Good night, Irene. Okay, this thing is extremely heavy. Yeah, that. If you don't believe an X-ray tube is heavy. Just ask me, and I'll tell you. That All right, Will, are you holding that thing steady? Okay, super. 
All right, check out how much oil is in this puppy. Yeah, it's a lot. Look at that. What kind of oil is this anyway? Is it Crisco? It's olive know. oil. Olive oil? Olive oil. I don't think so. I'm, I think it's some kind of like a thin motor oil. Ew. <laughs> but it's clean. I'll give it that. Pretty much nastiness. Say, Dad, when's our next bonfire going to be? I don't know. Why? Do you think we should ignite this oil? Yeah. I think that might make a big mess. Okay. Wait that seems to be most of the water. oil. <laughs> is there more? There probably is, but I can't hold this thing up any longer because it weighs about 40 pounds. That's a lot. And I'm old and weak. Okay, pause the film. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, welcome back. Now this is day two of x-ray tube disassembly. Um, basically what I've got here, same tube as yesterday, only now we've taken away some of the retaining rings from the end and now we can lift off this diaphragm um, which wound up kind of being a bear but eventually it came loose without destroying it. Oh by the way, let me just take the time to say when you go to disassemble an x-ray tube make sure you bring along plenty of napkins because this thing is a greasy mess okay here's that diaphragm I was telling you about nice soft rubber okay inside there's another layer okay this is just a like a protective disc there's a hole in the middle so that the oil can flow back and forth and if I can just get a grip on this with my fingernail then we'll just pull it right out of there okay here's the problem with not having any fingernails Okay, hang on a second. I'm going to need to get another tool. Okay, I'm back. Now, with the help of this ordinary pin punch, okay, out that thing goes. Now we can see that inside, ah, here we go. This is the cathode end of the x-ray tube. Now, I had this thing apart earlier, and you'll notice I cut the wires. Okay, always cut the blue wire first. Check this out. Okay, this is the cathode end this is where the high voltage cable comes in from the overhead crane and this whole thing just pulls right out okay the <clears throat> high voltage cable plugs right in there okay now with that high voltage connection out of the way we can see that there's a plastic framework inside and it has some little plastic screws um, actually I'm thinking these things are probably made out of nylon and not just regular plastic. Um, but once you get them loosened up with a screwdriver they're pretty easy to come out. You know quite a few things um, in this tube have been easy to extract once you get them broken loose a little bit and I think the reason for that is because everything inside this tube housing is literally soaked in oil. So all these screws and um, all these parts they've been soaking in dielectric oil for um, probably several years. Okay, I'm gonna have to finagle this thing around. I think I'm gonna need both hands in order to be able to do this. And uh, as you guys know by now, um, okay, take a look, see at this, and just keep in mind where everything's located. And then whenever we get the tube out, um, you'll see that the cathode ends, these wires, are what supplies electricity to the filament. All right, uh, see you in a bit. Okay, several minutes later, um, what happened was this. I got in here and I started trying to remove the tube from the stator end and that thing was held in place by three bolts. Well, I took the nuts off and I still couldn't get it to come loose. What I wound up having to do was take a pin punch and just drive those studs back through these openings here and then I was able to twist the stator assembly and get the whole thing to come out. Now another thing that I had to hassle with was all these wires. I didn't want to just cut them so I had to force them through that um, that little hole right there one at a time and so now basically the whole thing is loose and it's still in the housing as you can see um, right here okay this is the this is the um, and this comes from the anode end of the tube, and 
This is its counterpart from the cathode end of the tube. And we'll talk a little bit more about these things in class. You'll notice these, um, where these um, electrodes, yes, these are the sockets for the electrodes. And you'll notice these things are totally insulated. So here's a question. How in the world does the electricity get from the cathode all the way over to the anode without there actually being a physical electrical connection? Hmm, that's something to think about. Okay, so anyways, here we go. Tube housing, and inside the tube housing, the x-ray tube itself, which I'm going to take out of there in just a moment, but I'm going to have to put the camera down because I don't want to wind up breaking the thing after, you know, going through all this trouble of removing it. Okay, so hang on just one second. Okay, and voila, here we are. We have one Siemens x-ray tube, complete with stator assembly, which I'm going to leave on this thing. I'm going to leave the stator assembly here so that everybody can have a good look at exactly how the stator relates to the rest of the tube. Um, I think this is a pretty good setup. This is a good teaching tool, and I'm not sure that I'm going to keep all these other component parts because, holy mackerel, this thing is really, really heavy. Anyway, okay, here we go. Oh, this is something I wanted to show you guys. This ring here, okay, this just fits around this end of the tube, and it's got some little rubber feet. Okay, so it fits nice and snug, and that keeps the cathode end of the tube from just kind of... Um, you know, being loose in there. It gives it gives it something to hang on to, something between the tube and the inside of the tube housing. All right, so basically that's it. Um, over the course of the last couple hours, we've seen how to take a tube apart, and now we know pretty much the component parts. And whenever we're in class, we'll take a look, see at this thing in person. Um, everybody can get a hand on it and um, just kind of see how an x-ray tube works and uh, thanks very much I appreciate it and I'm sure I'll see y'all later on have a good day okay here I am out in my garage workshop and what I've got here is an x-ray tube and right here is the collimator box that I took off of it just a matter of moments ago as you can see it's got three different one, two, three set screws. Those are um, basically like hex nuts. And what you have to do is unscrew all three of them and those things secure to this brass ring right here. That brass ring is what holds the, allows the collimator to hold on to the tube itself. Um, this is a Siemens tube. I don't know if you can see that or not. Siemens. Right there is the window. That's the window of the tube. And you'll notice that this window happens to be made of metal. Hang on. You can hear that? I don't want to tap it too hard because it'd be bad if my finger just went right through it. Beryllium is a very soft metal. Also kind of expensive, but it makes really good windows for an x-ray tube. So here we go. And see, uh, this is basically a piece of quarter inch plate steel and that's what helps the or that's what allows the tube to mount to the overhead crane but you know of course we don't have that here with us right this minute okay now then what I'm gonna do is and hopefully they're not gonna be too difficult to move um, but I've got some more hex nuts here and once I've got those off then we'll be back in just a matter of moments and I'll show you some more stuff